Good morning and welcome back to Planet Adult History. Today we are going to discuss what if Manichaeism was successful. By successful, I mean that Manichaeism could eventually replace a religion like Christianity, for instance. And especially its position not only in the antiquity, but especially in the late antiquity and early Middle Ages. What exactly is Manichaeism? It was a major religion founded in the 3rd century by the Sassanid prophet Mani. Manichaeism is thus heavily linked with Mani as a prophet, and also what he did during his life. The main point of Manichaeism is that it has an elaborate dualistic cosmology describing the struggle between good and evil, good from the spiritual world of the light versus the evil material world of darkness. Light is gradually removed from the world of matter and returned to the world of light where it came from. As you can see, Manichaeism has heavy inspiration from Gnosticism and it also has uh, its basis on religions from Mesopotamia, the place where Mani actually was born, because Mesopotamia for a huge time was part of the Sassanid Empire. His religion had a lot of success in the Aramic speaking regions, it thrived in places such as the Roman Empire, uh, Central Asia, actually the only state that converted to Manichaeism officially was the Uyghur Khanate, and then also in China, especially during the Tang Dynasty. But wherever Manichaeism spread, it was persecuted, repressed, and many of its uh, yeah, believers, they were just killed. Uh, <laughs> It's of course not a very nice fate and nice thing for this religion, but yeah, it suffered a lot. But even despite all this persecution, it still was very successful because even though you killed a lot of believers, it just you couldn't get totally rid of it. And also places in uh, Europe, for instance, Christianity, they drew some influences apparently from Manichaeism and also in Asia for instance uh, China you had like a red turban movement and also a white lotus movement I think which also drew a lot of inspiration from Manichaeism and this is of course uh, already around the 8th or 9th or even 10th century. Mani believed that, his, that the teachings of Gautama Buddha, Zoroaster and Jesus they were incomplete and that his revelations were the, for the entire world, calling his teachings the religion of light. Mani began preaching at an early age and was possibly influenced by contemporary Babylonian Aramic movements such as the Mandaism or uh, Aramic translations of Jewish, uh, Jewish apocalyptic writings similar to those of uh, Koran and the book of uh, Enoch, for instance, and by the Syriac dualistic Gnostic writer Bardaisa, who lived a generation before Mani. Manichaeism could thus be seen as a continuation, and Mani only as a person who gave a name to that philosophy, to that religion. A key belief in Manichaeism is that the powerful, though not omnipotent god power, or the good one, was opposed by the eternal evil power, the devil. The human person is seen as a battleground for these powers, the soul defines the person, but it is under the influence of both light and dark. The, this uh, contentation uh, plays out over the world as well as the human body, neither the earth nor the flesh were seen as intrinsically evil, but rather possessed by portions from the light and from the dark. And uh, the Manichaean church also had a certain degree of organization. There was a leader, you had 12 apostles, you had 72 bishops, you had 360 uh, presbyters, the general body of the elect and the heroes. Moreover, a huge series of books, translations, depictions, uh, stories have been kept to some degree until nowadays. 
but with the series of persecutions, the rise of Islam, and ultimately the dwindling numbers of adherents, Manichaeism died out. But what if all of that changed? What if Manichaeism was successful? One point of divergence that I propose to you would be that we would take, for instance, Diocletian, and he would choose to not persecute the Manichaeists, or just Christians, for instance. And then later on, due to the higher number of uh, Manichaeists, uh, an emperor like Constantine could then just convert to Manichaeism. This would give Manichaeists also the time to somehow distinguish themselves from other religions and not be seen as a syncretic faith. Otherwise, their religion would at one point disappear or be seen as a DLC to a whole game, if you understand what I mean. Look at Christianity and Islam. They were to some degrees compromising, but as for the rest, they were very expensive and thus also very successful. Uh, Manichaeism would need something similar, and instead of having the peoples of the books, as with Islam, uh, Manichaeism could tolerate a few religions as people attempting to follow the light, because money was uh, inspired by Buddha and also by other people like Zoroaster and Jesus, and thus, while some religions they would be deemed as a path of the, the or people who follow the light, other religions they would then be seen as religions that lead to darkness. I believe that another result of this would be that Augustine of Hippo would probably remain Manichaean and this would certainly boost Manichaeism as a result because Augustine of Hippo he made a huge effort to somehow give Christianity a lot of basis to discuss many important points which are until nowadays the very foundation of at least Catholicism and someone like Augustine alone could give a lot of form to uh, Manichaeism. Many efforts would be made to refine the philosophy and to give also more consistency to it. But as always, problems, yeah, they would rise and thus we would see some schisms within Manichaeism. But due to this dualistic nature, I believe that Manichaeism they would not have so many schisms as Christianity, but the schisms, they would largely depend on cultural or ethnic issues. Manichism would try to fit in, but to certain cultures, uh, regions or ethnicities. Many more prophets, they would be added from local folklore, culture and legends to complete Manichism or to explain it easier to the local population. They would not have the same name in every region of Rome, but they could be interchanged easily. And we would see something similar as with polytheism, but this time these uh, saints or these prophets, they were not gods, but yeah, they, they were actually a bit lower. They would be seen as prophets or people who had a lot of light within them. The same would probably also happen in other parts of the world, like Persia, for instance, or Central Asia, and eventually even China. As a result, I believe that Manichaeism within Northern Rome and Southern Rome would be very different, or actually the parts that would have been dominated by the barbarians, for instance. Remember Arianism. <laughs> Many barbarian kingdoms, they converted to Arianism while the Latin population was Catholic. Without Rome, the city as center of Christianity, it would thus be much easier to have this north and south division. To the Middle East, the divisions between Manichaeism would not be that strict and somewhat watered down. Armenia and Mesopotamia were often switched places, but it is likely that keeping Mesopotamia would have been more important to something like a Manichaean Roman Empire, then to a non manichaean Persia, or perhaps a later converted manichaean Persia or Sassanid Empire. But if both empires would become manichaean, well, they would have endless and tiresome wars, and Mesopotamia with Stesiphon, a city on the Tigris River, would just be another perfect excuse to have 
more wars. Western Rome would most likely still fall, as in OGL, while Eastern Rome and Persia would still continue their battles and wars until the Arabs without Islam would invade them. The Arabs would make similar invasions as the barbarian kingdoms did with Western Rome and with the Arabs and surviving Haftalites due to a weaker Sassanid Empire, Persia too would collapse and antiquity would cease to exist. We would have a collection of Germanic kingdoms, of Arabic kingdoms, of Hunnic kingdoms around the ancient world and also some other kingdoms or principalities that would claim to be descendants of Rome or of Persia or whatever you want to call it. The Hunnic kingdoms, they would support a more Buddhist influence on Manichaeism while the Arabs may have a Mohammed-like figure who would be seen as a prophet as well but in the name of Manichaeism. The Germanic kingdoms would have their own way of Manichaeism and then again we would have the split between the Mediterranean area and the non-Mediterranean area. We would not see a similar split of Latin West and Greek Eastern parts. But all in all this religion would not declare different interpretations as outright wrong or heretic, but just as different and that the prophets were the same but known under different names. What was more important was whether the way to the light was guaranteed or not. If a neighbor kingdom was closer to the darkness but the Arabic kingdom closer to the light, well the neighbor kingdom would certainly see a war while the Arabic kingdom would be seen as a good example only with some yeah, differences or well indifference at worst. Structures and churches would arise too in such a timeline and it is not unlikely that some priests in some areas could have powers of a prince or even a king. The same happened with the fall of Rome where certain Christians they had a collection of powers like in Trier or Köln or Mainz for instance and they stayed independent in yeah, some degrees. Such cities they could conclude for instance include for instance uh, Constantinople, Baghdad or other cities which were very big, important and had a strategic position. Also Alexandria for instance would be very perfect for it. And they could use their position as a leverage for trade purposes and diplomacy for instance. I can't really tell how the map would look like because well, all the world would be much more balkanized. And if we would have something like a Frankish Empire, well, they would need to have alternate succession laws and perhaps then we could see a Frankish Empire coming closer to the size of Western Rome or maybe we might see the Bulgarians trying to pull off the same in uh, the Balkans and modern day Turkey would uh, have something else in there and we could get, see perhaps an Arabic kingdom or a native Egyptian state which would try to do the same to somehow unite certain parts under the Roman Empire or until yeah, another empire that they would see as their predecessor. Another very important point is to note that the Kievan Rus would definitely become Manichaean. And much of the hordes and nomads that invaded Western Asia and Eastern Europe, they too would become Manica. With the trade routes such as the sea route in the Indian Ocean and the Silk Road being domi dominated by Manican traders, places as Indonesia and Western China or even parts of India would convert to Manichaeism as well. But the further Manichaeism goes, the more it would change and actually syncretize just like Christianity did, for instance, with Mexico, with the Virgin of Guadalupe. Another consequence is that due to the Balkanization, but strong and fiercer competition between many, many Persian, Roman uh, successor states, Turkic and Mongol tribes, you would have a more difficult yeah, timeline where these hordes, they could not just sweep in and destroy everything, they would have to fight against many different successor states, they would have to fight different, uh, in different ways with different strategies and it would be very difficult for them to even come close to the areas 
what they did like in uh, modern day Turkey. While the Kievan Rus, they would still get destroyed because in there we would not have this heavy organization and then again the Mongols, they would collapse. The consequences are the following. While there would be a huge balkanization in our world, the trade to India and China would not really be disrupted and there would be no need to go and find another route. Only some smaller states, they might try to do it to gain more leverage or to gain more power, but we wouldn't have an age of exploration per se or a much later one, if at all. At the same time, Australia and much of the Pacific could be known earlier and the discovery of the Americas through the Pacific could be more likely in this timeline. Technology would be more advanced in some ways, especially in the military ways, but also in another few ways, which I want to explain now. We would have an, something earlier like a Renaissance and an Enlightenment period, which would also happen earlier. Astrology, for instance, was a key component of Manichaeism, and just with astrology alone, we would get improvements in many technological areas, be it with glasses, navigation, geography, etc. The Renaissance would already exist earlier on. Since the Visigoths, they wouldn't be conquered, and probably an alternate Car Carolingian Renaissance would exist as well. The Enlightenment would exist earlier as Manichaeism wouldn't be as much against progress and technology as Christianity was, and it was the goal of Manichaeism to lead people to the light or something like enlightenment, would definitely appear much earlier on, and with the connection still existing between the North and the South, the Middle East, India, China, and many more areas, much of the knowledge could circulate a bit faster than it did in OGL. Moreover, without this policies against iconoclasm and many other things within the Byzantine Empire, we would also see that much of the Greek texts, they would not just be banned outright. So, and also with many more successor states, it is also very likely that some of this knowledge would be retained in certain areas, while maybe some areas they would outright ban it or lose it. But then at the same time, this knowledge would again reappear, resurface, and it would circulate once more. What would the philosophy and culture be like in such a world? Well, for one, I believe it would be more discussions between good and evil, and there wouldn't be much room for grey interpretations. What is good and what is evil? People would discuss what actually would lead to the path of light and what would lead to the path of darkness. And depending on the rulers and the culture, different interpretations would appear after decades or centuries. Then the concept of freedom too might appear or have an alternate meaning, as there are two gods, people can choose, the light or the darkness. Each of the choices would have a consequence. Thus, choices could be made in the mannequin world, and nobody would be necessarily at the mercy of an all-powerful god, but the choices made it would be a proxy war between the god of the light and the god of darkness. Choices exist and as a result freedom exists too, but comes with consequences again. Atheism could also exist without bigger problems in such a scenario, because one would not need to necessarily believe in a god and as long as you choose a path of the enlightenment or light, well, you were on a good track for most mannequins. But without Islam and Christianity, charities would not gain a much bigger foothold in an LTA, and poverty would be seen as consequence of not choosing the path of light. Thus, in a far alternate future, ideologies like libertarianism would be the norm, but ideology similar to maybe socialism, for instance, would appear as a reaction to it, but be seen as hindering progress within society, progress towards the path of light. Manichaeism may have a darker tone in its beginning, but I believe that much of it, yeah, it may have been an exaggeration of Manichaean enemies or Christians or Muslims, and later on, Christianity and Islam themselves also went on and rumbled about the bad human nature. I mean, which religion did that not at one point? 
by some time mannequin would probably also switch and have a more positive tone, proposing ways to achieve the enlightenment. Another important result of this is that people will be more active and will try to achieve things in their lives, contrary to some staunch and firm Christian or Islamic believers who would wait all their lives just to come to the paradise. Churches and temples would also be full of depictions and detailed architecture as Manichism never tried to be humble. I'm not saying that all churches and places of worship would be full of pictures, but if you are looking at Manichan books that were found in Western China, you can see for yourself that they were nicely decorated and beautifully written. So arts and thus culture would be very much alive and kicking in the Manichan world. And that's where we leave it for now. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum forum.planetalthistory.ga Until next time on Planet Alt History.